What's up, peeps? My guest today is someone who has personally helped me get my own business on track. I am excited to introduce you to Ben Berman, co-founder of Optimize for Growth. Ben is an entrepreneur and former CEO and COO of multiple high growth companies. After making his successful exit, he is now a record holding certified EOS implementer dedicated to helping companies improve their people, profits, and scale. Ben, what's up, my man? Thanks so much for being on the show. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. So uh, we'll, we'll get into this. Uh, I don't want to get too carried away right off the bat here, but I'm a huge fan of Ben's for everyone listening in. Uh, I found Ben through a, a part of uh, YEC, which is a bunch of entrepreneurs and founders of companies that kind of collab, get together, mind share. And I learned about something called EOS, uh, which is the entrepreneurial operating system, which I'm sure Ben is going to get into and touch on today. But I, it was something that I was like, just in, just so attracted to. Um, I knew pretty much early on that this was something that our organization needed. I found Ben, kind of him and I had a conversation. We got a very good vibe from Ben. And I've been working with Ben now for quite some time implementing EOS. Uh, so again, this is something that uh, again, Ben is a, an awesome guy personally, but professionally, he's really helped me put my business on track. So really excited to introduce what he does and some of his insight to those tuning in. So, so Ben, before we get into all that, because I am, if you couldn't tell, I'm really excited. Uh, <laughs> I'd love for you to just give a little context to those tuning in of who you are and what makes you tick. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the kind words and, and you did a pretty good job introducing it. I mean, I, in short, I am absolutely obsessed with making things better and I get pure joy out of what I do. So as excited as Frank is, listeners, I'm just as excited because I get to do what I do. Um, and, and what I do is exactly that, is help business owners make their businesses, but really their lives better. Because the more control you can have on your business, and not vice versa, the more freedom you will have as an individual, the more productive you'll be doing the things you really should be doing and not sucked into the stuff that you shouldn't. So for me, helping with that kind of transformation, it's, it's, it's an obsession. Mm. And, and, and it does. You, are, you do honestly care about me personally. Uh, I think if I have a good home life and personal life, that just flows over to the business. I think if things are going terribly in business and anyone can relate to this, you bring that home into your family life and, and that could be very toxic. So uh, I've been very lucky. Uh, well, actually not lucky because I hate luck, but I've been very grateful to be blessed with, with some of the things that I have in, the, in that flow of business and, and personal life because I'm, I'm a pretty pretty happy guy. And, and those things don't, don't, um, don't interact with each other negatively. And, and a lot of that recently, I, I always tell people the last two years of business has just been one of the, one of the greatest times in my life. And again, I attribute a lot of that to, to the work that you've been helping with our organization. So give us a, now understanding a little bit that folks tuning in have no idea what EOS is, what an EOS implementer is. Can you, and then you having some experience, uh, you had a lot of success, you, you've worked with a lot of founding organizations, being a, again, an entrepreneur yourself. What's, what's your journey like? Give us a little backdrop of that journey and how you got to be where you are today. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, it, it's funny that you say that because we're talking about all the positive, but the real story is a whole lot of negative. So I, I've been a lifelong entrepreneur and I've made three lifetimes worth of mistakes. I mean, pretty much every management and leadership mistake you can make. I got at least 90% of those done within like my first five years of being an entrepreneur. So I was a total bull in a China shop, you know, no work-life balance, or I would, you know, it just everything. It was a disaster. And, and worse yet, I mean, when I would even try to go be a, an employee somewhere, God forbid, oh, was I the worst employee. So I, I eventually kind of realized that I, you know, there was no shame in, in getting a little bit of help. And I didn't have to make it up as I went along. You know, I've always found the, the great arrogance is thinking that we've got these hundreds of years of history of business behind us, right? And you say, no, I'm different, right? I have to do it myself, which of course, that's what I thought. And then the sort of transformation was when I realized, okay, there's this framework I can use to, uh, in one case, 
I, I was brought into a business to run it, been around for 19 years. Uh, I was bringing it into the, its 20th year. On my third day of work, I had a guy who was in his 50s try to choke, like physically, not even metaphorically, physically try to choke another sales guy over a dispute over a lead. So that was a pretty toxic culture. And that was the disaster. Had I not had a framework to work through, I would have been dead in the water. Instead, we were able to turn around. We broke revenue records, profit records, fixed the culture. So for me, that was kind of that eye-opening experience. And then the more positive version was I was part of a super high growth business where it was in the custom apparel space. We basically, because it was commission only sales, we could not find salespeople fast enough. I mean, it was a rocket ship. The more salespeople we got, the more sales we got, our infrastructure could handle it. But to somehow control when we're going from five people, three people, seven people to now 70, it's a totally different ball game. So it, it, in both sort of that turnaround effort for me uh, and, and then also like, okay, we've got all this great success, but how do we not break the company and ourselves along the way? I had those two experiences with EOS and eventually my mentors are like, look, you clearly are an evangelist. You clearly have felt both major situations where this works. Why don't you come do this full time? And I uh, dove head first. It's pretty much all I do is work with clients like Frank and, 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 uh, and try to engineer similar transformations to kind of go from the chaos to that freedom and success that everyone really wants. Great. And good insight there. And again, we'll, we'll unravel a little bit more of that as we work through some of this, but being the fact, one of the greatest things I love, and I, I've say, I've said it before, I love working with you is the fact that I'm as a business owner, a lot of times we feel alone, isolated. It's entrepreneurs. That's very common. We get depressed and stressed and all these things. And we feel like we're on this Island and, and no one can relate to us. And you look at perception, you know, a lot of times I look at other entrepreneurs and I'm like, man, they, they, they're making all the right moves or doing all the right things. And, and then you get to talking to people and just like you, you learn about your failures and the mistakes and all these things. So it, you're like, wow, I, I'm not alone. And, and working with you, what is great is you look at our company and you can easily identify things that you're like, well, you're doing this wrong, or here's some tweaks that you could be doing where you can really adjust and, and, and see some growth there and bringing you in. And, and honestly, anyone who's tuning in, uh, in full transparency, when I hired Ben uh, as my EOS implementer, Ben was very honest. First of all, he wasn't sure he was going to work with me. And we had a conversation, kind of interviewed me and make sure I, I fit, you know, what would his uh, you know, culture fit and those types of things of working with him. But he did say to me, hey, you want to do this on your own? Go ahead, do this on your own. If you want to, you can implement EOS on your own, go ahead. I knew when he said that before the words even got out of my, his mouth, I was like, option B. I, you know, I, I knew that I needed to hire someone because of the fact that I, I see the value in there. And in hiring you, you have line of sight into so many different businesses where it can take me months, years to try to figure things out. And I feel like you bring in the expert and, and we've, we've seen that with you identifying things where we can get better. So again, just want to make that clear to everyone. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to sales pitch EOS. I don't get compensated for anything there, but I do. <laughs> there's a lot of value in EOS uh, especially for companies. Well, I mean, your opinion there, How, what size companies should look at EOS? So it, it, it's so interesting because you wove two things that I was thinking about as you said that together. So generally speaking, the sweet spot is if you've got 10 to 250 employees, that's your automatic sweet spot. That's, and, and they're, as you know, it alluded to, they're psychographic. There are things like, I want to make sure you're really committed. I want to make sure this is something you really want. So there are other factors, but size-wise, that's your major one. Now, I've worked with companies of three people and we've worked with billion dollar, you know, many, many hundreds, even thousand person companies. Um, the, the core tenets still work, right? It's, it's, I would say the size is important, but why this is not like anyone and everyone should just go and get an EOS implementer is, it's really, are you committed to getting the things you want? So there are people who have a business and it's, it's their piggy bank and, you know, it does well or it doesn't do well, but they don't really want that much better. They just heard it's going to make you more money. I don't really want that as a client. And, and I don't think any real, you know, implementer worth his, his you know, weight and salt would be or want that because to get it to work, I am not coming in and saying, I've got all the answers. I'm coming in and supporting you. So it's sort of like a, in sports, they say like in football, it's the 12th man, right? You don't really have a 12th man on the field uh, or person, 
Um, but but it's really about having someone who's got your back, who's adding that extra oomph, who's able to see things externally. Um, so so yeah, as long as you're sort of in that range and have that mindset, it probably will fit for you. We joke internally, it works for businesses that have people in them. So if you're running a completely automated business, there's still some things we could do, but we're really working with people. Great. And, and, and again, if I wasn't a part of YEC, I would have, wouldn't have found out about EOS and, and I brought a question to the thread there and a bunch of people chimed in and, and you came highly recommended within that organization, which was awesome because there's always the power of, 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 of someone that validating uh, having work with you. So, so again, and you and I had the conversation and, and here we are today, but for people who are listening in, who maybe they don't know about EOS, or maybe they had heard EOS, maybe they've read Gino Wickman's book, Traction, which I would recommend anyone tuning in reads, whether or not you, you ever implement EOS, but what's a piece of advice that you would give to those listening in that are not familiar with EOS and, and, and probably struggling with some of the things that are common that you see among organizations that aren't running EOS, and then maybe add into their what a, a track of implementing EOS might look like of a business today and then after EOS. Perfect. Yeah. So, so I, I guess the piece of advice is, uh, it, it sounds so trite, but, but I, I, I know your profile because we work together and I certainly know mine. It's like, it's okay to get some help, right? Uh, I certainly in the beginning of my career just wanted to be that maverick, you know, I, I, we get these, these people in the news where we like, oh, Elon Musk is doing it himself. Steve Jobs did it himself, but it's really not true. What they were able to do is have really great help and a really great system to take that vision that they have and put it into, or had, uh, put it into reality, right? So, so that was as simple as it sounds, such an aha for me and, and sort of a, a thing I would say as far as, as uh, you know, those considering it. And like you said, um, we give the book away for free for the most part. I mean, we will give people the book because we want people to get started. These are best practices that are tried and true. They've been around for a hundred years. They're gonna be around for another thousand. We want you to get started on it because we just, everyone who's a great EOS implementer wants other people to be successful and that's what drives them. So we want you at the very least to get a little morsel, get a taste of that success, start having a better life and a better business and then you say, okay, I've got the basic mechanics here, but I haven't really gotten that rocket ship I was dreaming of. That's when the EOS implementer comes in. And the way we do it is basically we work over the course of a number of years and it's, it's, you come in first and foremost, we do the setup. And that's, you know, we call it the accountability chart. We don't believe in org charts, but who, who truly is accountable? Forget ego, forget all that stuff. Who is going to get what done and report to whom? No titles, no ego, no BS who's getting what done and who's accountable. It will free up your time because all of a sudden, all the things that you're wearing 14,000 different hats, you now know you can effectively leave things with people and they understand the expectations. But in addition, we're now putting in the measurables, the KPIs, the scorecard to say, do you have a handle on what you're doing? Do we have the meetings that are going to make it work? The reason EOS is called an operating system is just like if you pull out your phone or your computer, it's not the app itself that you're running. I'm not coming here to tell you, you know, how to, how to be better in the, in, the, in, the, in the benefits technology space, right? You know that business, you know it cold and you're fantastic at it. What I'm coming in is saying, let's put an overall structure so that you as a system, as, a, as an organism, whatever it is you do can be more effective. So we basically do that setup. What ends up happening is you're going to get all this progress to begin with. You start the ball rolling. And that snowball rolls and you'll say, oh, you know what? This is actually in the way of the snowball. We got to get rid of this piece or we got to refine this piece. So it has this way of uncovering the imperfections or, or the sort of the issues you weren't even aware of. I mean, I'm sure you could speak to that. There's stuff that we've identified where you're like, man, I didn't even know that was an issue, but that was the issue beneath the issue that was really sort of the linchpin. Once we get that foundation going, now we're in sniper style execution mode, right? Now we're pulling out issues that have come up because we built that foundation and if you got a merger acquisition or you got a specific people issue or you got you know a, a cash flow issue whatever it is we're bringing in the specific tool to the specific situation but the foundation is universal across all businesses you got to know who's going to be accountable we got to have numbers that cut through egos that, that can create clarity we got to have a mechanism so we can communicate and hold people accountable on those goals in the interim so it's not like hey i want to be here in 10 years 
And oh, by the way, I'll check back in 10 years, right? We got to be on that every week in the trenches, making it happen, or at least having a team that's reporting to us what's happening in the trenches. Yes, and no, a lot of the things that you mentioned are, are were really game changers for us. Again, as a, a, a hands-on kind of guy, I've always been hands-on, but a lot of the things that I was involved in with my organization, I shouldn't have been touching. I think implementing the accountability chart has been a game changer for me because now I've got what, again, a, a terminology from EOS, right people, right seats. We've got them doing their job. Uh, we, we hire and fire by what's called the people analyzer. So it's these, all these things that we put in and we, we when we hire someone, they're kind of checking the boxes of the culture of the organization and our core values. So, so all these things that we've done and it's, and it's a step-by-step -step process too. Again, for anyone who's like, oh, this is all things like it's this big thing that you do in a three weeks. I mean, it's so incremental that it's like, okay, we got this, we've done this. And, and these phases start to go out and then it's like, you, you start to see all the great things. And when, it's funny, I don't know if it was when we first talked or, or, or maybe it was our first meeting, but you had said, you're going to lose employees during this process. And at the time, I thought I had this great organization with this entire team of these people who were rah, rah, EBM, and we lost people pretty, in the first probably 60 days, 90 days, we lost people that as we rolled this out because of the fact that we, we really, that accountability, um, are they the right people, the right seats? Um, do they do they really want to be there? So so again, all these things that Ben's talking about for anyone have really shaped the business. And and again, you mentioned the ten years just now at the end. I mean, we we're, we set our one year goal. We are on track to meet our one year goal this year. Our five year goal, our ten year goal, and that's the thing. I I think people tuning in need to appreciate is that. You set goals for yourself. I want to be here in one year. I want to be here in five years. What Ben has done for us is say, okay, well, how are you going to get there in one year? What are you doing in between to get there? So, so again, it's all these great things. Um, and just, again, trying to give some context to those who are tuning in because it, it is, this is something that's working for us. Um, so with, with that, uh, some of the great things there and some advice you give. On the flip side of that, you've got – uh, you've uh, you've seen folks come in, in, through EOS. You know you're a world class implementer, and 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 my as far as my opinion goes, what are things that organizations are doing wrong, and that you can pinpoint and say, you know what I see a lot is is this. Yeah, I, yeah, you know it, it, it's I say it, and I, and I keep alluding to it, but I did so many of these things before, so there's not quite PTSD, but I just kind of have to laugh to myself. So when I say these things, these are all things that I made the mistake of myself, but I see this a lot in the market. So you, you said to one of them, when you were talking about goals, it's like, you know, there's a Yogi Berra line. If you don't know where you're going, I'll bastardize it. But if you don't know where you're going, you're guaranteed to get there. Right. It's like, we have these, okay. So what's our 30, 60, 90 plan. And you know, what are we going to do this year? But where are you going? Right. We believe that that your goal should be set ultimately, what is your North Star? What is the big thing you're trying to go to? It doesn't have to be super like detailed, but I wanna know wh what's the big win? And then why wouldn't you build backwards from there? Okay, so what's it look like in three years? What's it look like in one year? What are we doing this quarter to get there? Okay, how are we making sure that those quarterly goals are actually happening by working on them week to week and checking on them? So I think that people make mistakes with goal setting all the time, whether they don't sort of think of that long-term piece and work backwards, or they'll go too long-term and say, hey, let's just go set the stick out there and we'll, and we'll go work to it. But you know, a flight, a flight from, from New York to LA is on the direct flight path about 10% of the time. And you don't notice it because you're, you know, you're watching a movie or you know, zoning out or whatever, hopefully sleeping, whatever. But there's these constant micro adjustments that happen in order to get you there on time. And I'd say that goal setting is very similar, right? set that goal, but make sure that there's incremental adjustments that have to happen. Life happens. Take those, make sure they're part of the process and you'll get a lot more. The other thing that's really interesting that you spoke about, and I don't mean to just paint a picture of doom and gloom. This is not me coming in and, you know, coming in with the, with the sickle, like, you know, the grim reaper saying, we got to get rid of all these people. What it will uncover is a lot of organizations, especially in good economic times, We'll say, oh, we're good, right? We're good. And then we get something like where you put pressure. <laughs> Can't think of any of those in 2020. And all of a sudden, all these cracks become massive, massive tears in the organization 
because you were able to fly along easily, but really you had people who weren't totally aligned or you had people who kind of were skating by, but maybe sales were doing such a great job that they were kind of painting over it or operations was so tight that you didn't really ever have to worry about sales because, you know, operations was doing such a good job, you were getting repeat customers. So what I found is uh, 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 there's, a, there's a great line from uh, Epictetus. He says, how long will you wait until you demand the best for yourself? I'm a big stoic philosopher kind of guy. And, and I, I sort of see a lot of times people say, yeah, we're good, right? We're okay, we're good. I never thought about that. Yeah, sales. I put a bunch of money into marketing. I hope it works. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but I know we're doing something on social media. Like I look at that as at what point are you going to demand the results that you actually deserve? So I think a lot of times people don't even think big enough for what they're capable of. And when they start to say, you know what, I actually want to have work-life balance and a business that sustains the lifestyle that I want and be able to take care of my employees and have a great culture. I mean, all those things really can happen. Um, and it kills me when, when people sort of, settle for less yeah never settle uh, i know <laughs> I, I totally agree it's the what gets you fired up though what do you, you get you've been doing this for a while now again i'm sure there's days where you're like you know dealing with your own stuff that personally and then you're you know last night you and i were actually talking it's like, like here's frank you know leaning on ben for advice and stuff so you're like I'm so drained. That was like at five o'clock at night. So what, what keeps you fired up and going and, and really saying, man, I love this and I, I can do this, you know, for the next 50 years. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. So it's funny you say that because after our call last night, I actually had like four more calls. I worked late last night, but I wasn't tired. And, and, and I'll say it's not for me. It's the drain is talking to you is never a drain right? It, it's those who want less for themselves than you want for them. And I think people could probably, you know, business owners who are listening can empathize. When you want something for an employee, they've got the talent, you've trained them up, but they're just not going there where like you want it so bad, it's right there. That to me drains my energy like anyone. Um, so so I, I, as far as getting me jacked up, if it's not apparent on this call, what gets me jacked up, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I, I, again, kindred spirits in that way. But I encourage other people to kind of be like, what are you doing that is in your, people have called it the zone of genius. People have called it unique ability. It's a Dan Sullivan strategic coach term. You know, we, we, call, we call it love great in the EOS world. What do you love doing and you're great at where you can be totally in the zone and you come up and you're like, man, I just spent 11 hours on that and that was awesome. And I feel great as opposed to, yeah, I was really good at that, but ugh, I'm wiped. So I, I would say for me, it's, it's, it's very specifically having to pull people, right? Having to drag people along when people want it, I can help get there. And, and that for me is the most, the most empowering thing I can imagine. When, I, when a client calls me when, two years ago, they're like, we're not making money. I'm totally underwater. I'm overwhelmed. I'm frustrated. I can't get these dang team members to get on the same page. We've got all this strife. And they call me and say, listen, I got these new business opportunities. The business is growing so well on its own that I only really need to work one day a week. What do you think about that? I say, I think that's great, right? That's exactly what they wanted two years ago. So, so I would say that is what, what sort of drives me and, 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 and energizes me. And the flip side where people don't sort of demand the best for themselves. I, I, I just, you know, you said it, never settle. It really, it saps my energy totally. Yeah. It with all that we went through in, in, you know, eight months into 2020 here, again, you work with a lot of clients that probably went through different phases. A great thing again about working with you is you basically whipped up this game plan for us early on and said, Hey, this is what, depending on what, how the business is impacted and you kind of broke it into three silos and really I would have never on my own. I probably would have scrambled if, if we weren't doing this and I didn't have you to lean on, but you basically said, okay, you're, if you hit here, this is what we're going to do. If you hit here, this is planning steps. And then kind of the, you know, ship is starting to go down type mentality. You know, what are we planning for? What are we doing? And you really laid that out. Uh, we, we didn't have to, you know, go down that road and, and the business has you know, been, been great uh, through, through all of this. But again, you've probably seen some different sides of that. And of course, you know, knowing, knowing how, how things have went this past few, few months of 2020, where are we going? What do you see 
uh, you know, maybe over the next five years? What's a, what's a Ben Berman prediction that we can count on? Uh, well, I think the only, the only thing that stays the same is change, right? So COVID obviously was a, was a really intense one and a total shakeup of the market. Uh, you know, but if you look back, <laughs> they're always, if you watch the news media, they're always, this is the shakeup. This is the grand shakeup, the internet, the internet of things, all these different things going into every year cycle, we get to sit back and look and say, wow, yeah, a lot really has changed. Um, so I think we're in for, uh, a, a, a sort of. Uh, increased velocity of some of these changes that were sitting latent before. So, you know, increased reliance on technology. These are not necessarily novel thoughts, but if, if I can take your question in a slightly different direction, I'm certainly not a future predictor, but uh, you know, as, as you alluded to, we're, we're entrepreneurs, right? Crisis hit and we said, oh my gosh, our clients need a little bit more. We've got this EOS thing. It's, we got the foundation. We batted down the hatches. We're good but also let's make some contingency plans and let's figure out like entrepreneurs, put the entrepreneur hat on how we're gonna deal with it. So using myself as an example, more importantly clients as an example, whether it's a, uh, a Spanish immersion school I work with where they've taken their brick and mortar model and now added a whole suite of subscription learning and online learning or you know, a, 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 a restaurant that's gone into mass catering for hospitals or, or even a more obvious one, we have a bunch of manufacturing clients who've now gotten into the PPE game, right? So the, the, the thought is, I can't tell you what's gonna happen and, and I wouldn't even pretend to, but what I can tell, can tell you is what will make you successful. And I, I, I've been saying this a lot to people and kind of having conversations with, you know, you, Frank and others, it's like, keep your head up, right? Keep your head up means really two things in my mind. It's the best piece of advice I, I ever got from my father, who I respect very dearly. And it's, he always said, keep punching, which when there was that little choking shakeup, I grew up boxing. So early in my career, that went fine. But I think he meant something different. But keep your head up really is certainly a boxing term too, right? You don't want to put your head down and just absorb the punches. Um, but have the positive attitude to see the whole picture, right? It's very easy to kind of turtle in when things are going sideways and, and, and really miss what is great opportunities. A lot of the businesses we've spoken to have grown in COVID, right? We've been working with, and their models are not COVID appropriate. They've just had to shift appropriately. And the other kind of keep your head up is exactly that. It's in addition to positive attitude, I was reading recently, if you notice when you're in a really good mood, your field of view literally goes expands. And when you talk about tunnel vision, right? When you're in a horrible mood, you actually see less, literally and figuratively. So no matter how exciting or challenging the situation you're in right now, keep your head up, be looking around, start to notice those shifting things because those changes are happening. There's a whole lot of opportunity masquerading as threat and, and uncertainty. So keep your heads up, that's all I can say. And, and Frank, I'd actually wanna hear what your perspective is where we're headed uh, in, in the next five years. So, so I'd love to hear your prediction, honestly. <laughs> it's flipping it on me, huh? Yeah. Well, you know what, I, I think, and I've done, poof, I don't know, over, I think, you know, close to 30, 40 episodes now, um, yeah. and, and everyone does give a prediction. So that's funny that I, I'm a believer, um, and, and not exactly how you said it, but we can't predict the future. No one was predicting COVID was coming. If it was, people, this wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be dealing with this. So yeah, it's very difficult. People predict the stock markets and the, the crises that go on and you really can't until you get more data and then you start to navigate. Like you said, the flight path earlier, I think it's very true. We'll, we have a, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. We're going to do all these little bobs and weaves and twists and turns as we get yeah. there because things are going to come up and things are going to change. We have a month of something that goes on. We're like, okay, well, we don't want to do that again. Let's pivot and move. So yeah, I mean, my, I think that the, for me, and, and this is funny, I just put a video out this morning. I, I bought a massive commercial building, it's the biggest investment of my life. And Congratulations again, by the way. What's that? Congratulations again. Oh, thank you. Yes. So, and, and, but again, at the time of the pandemic where I, it's a risk, 
And I feel like I, people should continue to take risks. The next five years, don't be, people start to become risk averse and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that because who knows where we're going to go. Make the, make the, I mean, make smart and calculated risks. Don't make crazy, stupid risks, but make them. And, and there's opportunity to grow. And I feel like the next five years, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for those that want to grow and that see things other people don't see. Uh, especially for sure. And businesses that make some changes, like you said, your manufacturing companies that started producing PPE equipment, they weren't, that's not with their business model, but they, 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 they made that happen because they saw a need for it. And I feel like people that bury their heads in the sand and pretend that things aren't changing around us all the time, COVID or not, things are changing regardless. If you took that out of the equation and you ignore it, you're going to get swept away and there's businesses that are paying attention and adapting and using these tools that are coming our way to their advantage. And that those are those who are going to survive. So the next five years to me is going to be a, a time of great success for those who go out and get after it. 1000% couldn't say it better myself. Awesome. Yeah. So, so I'd love to use, you know, a, a couple of minutes here as we wrap up to people tuning in what and, and really uh they want to maybe they are intrigued to vos uh, maybe they want to learn more about you and i know you got a pretty full plate and, and getting you know hiring ben um you know it's it's uh something that was a great move for me again and people who might want to learn more about you and what you offer where where what could they be doing and, and and then personally with you how can they find you how can they connect with you sure Sure. And, and the good news is, because you alluded to, to my workload, is I'm really diligent around keeping space for extra time with clients. So fortunately, I still have a little bit of room left over. But when I, when I sort of, I fill up, I have this trusted group of associates and partners in the EOS community. The only thing I do other than help companies be more successful in their marketing and sales, help them get their overall operations as a whole, soup to nuts with EOS, the only thing I do besides that with my professional time is coach other EOS implementers on how to be better and be try to sort of contribute to that community because we're all a bunch of crazy entrepreneurs ourselves too. Um, so if, if I'm maybe not the right uh, fit for you or maybe I don't even have capacity, I'll find the right one for you. So if you're thinking about it, just want to find out more, I always will have the conversation. Always, always, always. Where you can reach me. You can call me 212-517-1836. I will certainly take your call. I actually pride myself on it. Or if you want to be more textual, you can email me at B-E-B, -E -B, like Beb, B-E-B -E -B are my initials, Benjamin Edmund Berman, uh, at O like orange, O4G.com. It's optimized for growth with four, the numeral as the four. So B-E-B -E -B at O4G and of course, O4G.com if you want to find out more. Awesome. Great. Yes. And I encourage anyone tuning in to learn more, seek Ben out. He's been uh, amazing. And, and thank you so much for sharing here. You've been awesome with some of your insights and uh, I truly, truly appreciate you taking some time out today for us. Hey man, I'm really happy to be here. Always a pleasure to talk with you and, and really honored that you had me. Thanks man.